Guys, Scorch Trials is the second in the Maze Runner series. Um, I just wanted to know, how familiar are you with books? Uh, very familiar with the books. We read, I read the first two books just in preparation for the movie, just to kind of get an idea and a sense of where my character was going and what elements of the character from the books I can put into uh, the movie. So uh, we had to take a little bit of creative liberties because we can't obviously fit all the elements of the book into the movie. Some things work, some things don't. So we kind of took elements of both the second and third and just picked the best ones. And, and, and fans have been very uh, clear about some of, the, some of the elements of the books that they, that they loved. And we, we try to put, the, put that in the movie. So hopefully the fans are pleased because... Uh, yeah, we've got little bits and pieces. Yeah. Like a haberdashery. I mean, you know, it's kind of oh, a mixture. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. It's a good mixture. Um, do you ever feel like you're letting down the fans when there's things that aren't in the, book, uh, in, in the films that are in the books? I think uh, from our own, well, mine anyway, mm -hmm. um, interaction with the fans, I think they're quite understanding with it. Um, yeah. And also we have um, James Dashner, the author's blessing as well. He's he's full fully supportive of our films and, and of our uh, creative choices that we he understands that we have to make in order to turn a book, which is completely different to a film, into a movie. Um, they're, they're just two very different things you know, you know and, and there have to be some changes just in order for it to work as a movie mm. what, what were the big changes that you noticed this time around from the first film in terms of the scale of this project I mean, it feels a lot bigger is it a, a bigger project yeah it is but i mean we had double the budget and um uh, i think that just gives wes a lot more to play with and also we're, we're painting a much bigger well we're painting the world um whereas before we were painting a very insular world um <clears throat> Very incubated world. Incubated, yeah. I mean, they're very, very much a kind of uh, confined within mm -hmm. this. That that was the feel of it. Whereas this is about openness. It's about the expansion of, of of the landscape. And you know, we're we're, we're able to see the horizon for the first time ever. And we're, but that that's partly what's so scary is that we don't know what's beyond it. We don't know if there's anyone beyond it or anything. Mm -hmm. It's a film not just aimed at young audiences. Obviously, uh, this for a wide, wide variety of, of people. But I just wanted to know what sort of films you were interested in when you were younger. What, what films were you watching when, say, five, 10 years ago? Five, 10 years ago, how old was I? 25, I was 15. Um, I, well, I was always, sorry, I had to do a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I gave you two numbers, that's why. It's my <laughs> fault. Let's stick with 10 years ago. What were you watching 10 years ago? <laughs> uh, ten, oh, I don't know. What was I watching 10 years ago? I had uh, 50, um, oh, I liked Harold and Maud at, at that point. Um, and and with Noel and I, um, and yeah, it's, uh, films about like story and characters, and not an awful lot happens in those in both of those films. Um, but I just you know I've always liked the fact that you can just quite happily sit there for you know just under two hours and watch these weird people um, go about their lives in such a strange way. And it's it's I don't know I I just always loved that. I mean, but before then you know, I was a huge Star Wars fan. And, you know that's an epic saga and you know it's completely different um so yeah that, that's the thing i was watching what about yourself 10 years ago what were you watching all i remember is there was this one summer that my mom literally took me to the movie theater every day that summer really and this every is day yeah this was when movies were really cheap wow. and um i just remember watching like all sorts of movies i remember like apollo 13 there was a Power Rangers movie that I saw. There was like I don't know that summer I, I almost just literally saw all movies, and I think that's I think that's where like my love of film started with just hanging out with my mom. I think because she likes movies as well, and so ever since then I've just just devouring these movies, you know. Mm -hmm. But Thomas, um, you mentioned Star Wars and you mentioned some sci-fi movies as well, yeah. special effects movies. Yeah. Does it take away a bit of the magic working on films like this, or do you get a newfound respect for them? You were saying the other day how you kind of felt that in some ways. What do you mean? Um, just about like when you see like behind the scenes shots and stills and think, oh wow, that looks so cool. And then when you're all oh, right, yeah. Now that you've now that you've gone through it, it's like you see the picture now and it's like, oh, it's just me and my buddies just working, you know. But then when you see the movie though, then it's when you realize, wow, like I'm working on this movie, this cool sci-fi movie. And it looks great. It looks amazing. And that's when it comes. The magic of it comes back a little bit, you know. Um, but I think a big credit goes to West Ball. Because if it wasn't in his hands, it wouldn't be a great movie, in my opinion. Um, yeah, what about, I don't know. No, I, 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 yeah. I did think that the first time I ever got into film and TV and stuff and first time saw behind the camera, um, I thought it did ruin some stuff. But I, no, I don't think it does. In fact, 
you know, I have a greater understanding of the process, the processes involved and how many people are involved in trying to make one little project work. Um, and so I, I think I just appreciate it even more now. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Thank yes. you.